this is Christine Deschler, Chair of the Arlington Finance Committee. Um, let me do the roll call to make sure um, which members are present and that everyone can hear me. I'm starting with Jordan, who I think is uh, absent tonight. Uh, Shane? Jennifer? Sophie? Sophie with us? Yes. Uh, Brian, I think, is absent. Carolyn? Yes. You're here. Present. Rebecca? Present. Josh? Here. Grant? Here. Charlie? Here. John? Present. Daryl? Here. Annie? Here. Al Jones? Here. Topher? Here. Uh, Peggy? It's not here. Alta, is she here? No. Sorry, I think she's going to be out this week. Okay, Altosti? Uh, here. Uh, Dean is not with us tonight. And is Dave McKenna, McKenna still I not with us? I think he's joining right now. All right. And Tara Bradley, present. Yeah. yeah. All right, so... Um, all right, this is an open meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, as extended on July 16, 2022, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment only in writing by email to tbradley at town.arlington.ma.us.com. For this meeting, the Arlington Finance Committee is convening by video conference via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join and comment. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that attendees are participating by video conference. According, accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless it's shared notes otherwise. Before turning to the first item on the agenda, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker after they conclude their remarks. I will go down the list of uh, of members inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold, hold until your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair taking care to identify yourself. Um, all right, our first order of business is to approve the minutes of our last meeting on February um, 23rd, 22nd. Um, so just a quick note here, um, Sophie had pointed out that the um, select board, board administrator salary is um, only valid until um, the end of the year until January 2024. So I'm wondering if it would make sense to just actually just remove this since we're not um, we're not actually voting on it and we probably don't go into that much detail in a lot of other budgets um, or if we should kind of note that as of um, after that time period, the amount increases by a few thousand dollars. I'm fine with with um, deleting that um, that sentence, does anyone object to that? Does anyone have any other corrections or revisions to the minutes of the 22nd? 
Mary, could you take it to the top? have anything that you want to um, correct, Al? You all set, Al? I'm all set. In fact, I make a motion to accept the minutes as modified. Do I have a second? Second. second. All right, we'll take a vote um, unless there's any other discussion. All right, I don't see any hands. Jordan is not here. Shane is still not here. Jennifer, is she here? She's joining right now. Um, all right, we'll go on. Sophie? Yes. Ryan is not here. Carolyn? Carolyn? Yes. Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy is not with us. El Tosti? Yes. Dean is not with us. Uh, is Dave McKenna with us? Yes. All right. Okay, the minutes of the 22nd as um, revised have been approved. And, and Jennifer Suss has joined. Okay. I apologize. I was at the community safety building. I was, I messed up. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> All right. So, all right, we're getting into back into budgets. When um, during our last meeting, uh, we tabled the selectmen's budget, um, and Al Jones got some information for us. Al, do you want to talk about what you got from Julie? Um, sure. Uh, what I got was. Uh, the salary breakdowns and the summary for the select board and the uh, town manager's offices uh, from her. And it, it changed the numbers a little bit. Um, uh, I don't know whether you want me to go through all the numbers or. Um, I think as I, I, mean, I, I, I sent them out to everyone. As I understand that there are, no, there are no changes in the expense items of the select board's budget, correct? Correct. correct. And we uh, had all of the discussion we were going to have on that. So let's just focus on the salaries. And I think we got. Um, and basically, it was the board administrator salary. Right. Was reduced to 98166 with 1963 longevity. So the. Uh, Bottom line of that makes the board salaries 279, 920, and the taxation total 277, 855. Does everyone follow that? And I, I can I can share and bring them up on the screen if there are any questions. Does everyone understand what um, the, the new budget looks like for salaries for the select select board's budget? And that is the only change, correct? I see Sophie's hand. I, I'm a having, a, yep. I was just having a hard time pulling it up from my emails. If we could throw it on the screen for just a second, so I could say I looked at it. Sure. Let me uh, share my screen. Thanks. Okay. So the salary detail. Uh, this is the number that changed and the longevity changed for the board administrator. I, I forget what that was before, 115, 116, something like that. It basically is if, as if Marie were, was getting a normal increase. And then the uh, summation of that is here and the, the number that changed is the salaries, the longevity, the total, and then the bottom line total. I think the offset might have changed a little bit too. I'd have to look at the old one. 
No, it's the same. Okay. It's the same. Does everyone follow that? So I mean, the, the bottom line is just instead of the new, instead of Mar getting what Marie would have gotten, um, her salary was, you know, sort of you know back to normal scale. All right. Any other questions? Do I have a motion to approve the select board's uh, revised budget? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. Any further discussion? All right, seeing so no hands. Uh, Jordan is out. Shane is still absent. Jennifer? Uh, yes, approved. Sophie? Yes. Brian is out. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy is out. Al Tosti? Yes. Dean is out. Dave McKenna? Yes. Okay. The selectmen's, the select board's budget as revised has been approved. Now, Al, as I understand it, when you were getting that um, updated information, um, there was also a change to the town manager's budget. Is that yes. correct? Let me share again. So, okay, here's the um, original from the budget book. And this is related to the new deputy town manager of finance. Um, and we'd heard that. Uh, he or she was brought in at I think 138,000 something. So the 126, 413 wasn't going to make it. So the revised one is this with a new pay of 141, 760. And then that trickles through to uh, these new numbers for the town manager salaries. So with the offsets, the town manager's revised budget would be seven forty five four fifty three. Correct. All right, any questions, discussion? So I think what we need is a motion to reconsider the town manager's budget because I, as, as I recall, we've, we've approved it as initially proposed. All right, so moved. Second. Second. All right. All right, so we are moving to reopen um, the town manager's budget, and then we'll take a vote on the revised um, budget. Jordan is out. Shane, Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Ryan is out. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy is out. Al Tosti? Yes. Dean is out. Dave McKenna? Yes. Uh, Christine Chain has joined the meeting. I'm sorry. Did, did he vote? Were you present for that vote, Chain, to reopen the town manager's budget? Uh, uh, no. Yeah, I'll vote yes. All right. Thank you. All right. So the motion to reconsider the town manager's budget has been approved. Um, so now we will vote on the new, the, the uh, revised town manager's budget with a taxation total of 745, 453. 
are there any questions on what we're doing or any further discussion about the town manager's budget? Can I, can I ask a question? Hey. Sorry, for, I, I joined late, I apologize. Just the, the elevator pitch as a reminder, is this where the budget is gonna be a new number because of the new deputy town manager for finance? Right, With and we have the actual salary now. We, um, so, so that the expense line will be uh, bumped up a bit based on okay. the actual salary information that we have. Thank you. Sure. Anything else? All right, we'll take a vote on the town manager's revised budget. Jordan is out. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Uh, yes. Sophie? Yes. Brian is out. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Daryl? Annie? Yes. L. Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy is out. Al Tosti? Yes. Dean is out. Dave McKenna? Yes. All right. The town manager's revised budget has passed. No, um, no, Madam Chair, I, I don't, we haven't voted on the information technology budget, but I uh, just wanted to point out that uh, without asking, um, I got an updated summary here. This is the original, or excuse me, this is the original budget book with an expense of 679213, and it's been revised to 678813. So when we talk about it, let's use this, this new updated one. Okay. All right. I, I, I put the updated version in my presentation. Okay, okay great. Before we get to the IT budget, I want to finish off where we left. I apologize to everyone, and especially to Charlie Foskett by not allowing enough time um, for the retirement budget. Um, I was just trying to get in as much, uh, 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 as many things done as we could in the time we had, but I pushed it too much, and I don't think I gave Surely a good, uh, uh, an appropriate um, uh, length of time to talk about the retirement budget. So I am going to turn it over to Charlie um, and we'll uh, try to finish off that retirement budget. Um, and we'll take as much time as, as this budget needs. Take it from, take it away, Charlie. Thank you, Christine. Uh, first of all, I, I'm the one that should apologize. I was trying to throw too much detail up there in a short period of time. So if I can share my screen, I prepared an abbreviated um, presentation. And um, let's see if I get this to work. You should be all set to share. We see it, right? Yes. Yes. OK. So um, what I decided to do is to just, uh, first of all, to mention that um, that we had this meeting um, on the, the 9th. Um, Rich Greco, the administrator from the retirement board, uh, met with Al Tosti, Topher and I um, on a, a Zoom meeting. And I thought it would be helpful to um, just talk a little bit about the background of this uh, budget. You know, we read a lot lately in the papers about the social security fund running out of money and, you know, the, basically the problems of the social security fund and the problems of Arlington's contributory retirement fund are, and other retirement funds are very similar. The, um, the, the fund is required to pay the future benefits to employees while they uh, are retired employees while they live. And um, we have the number of retirees constantly growing. And the other uh, good news for them not necessarily for the fund, is that they're all living longer, okay? So the future costs of our fixed benefit plans grow. In other words, these uh, employees retire at a fixed number per year, typically 80% uh, of their highest three years of salary. So the, the obligation of the town in the future is 
sort of growing on a, an exponential basis. So uh, the town has to contribute uh, money to a fund to to pay for these um, retirees, and and basically the uh, government standards accounting board wants to see all these uh, future costs fully funded. And historically, um, I you know this was the case when when I first joined town meeting, they only put aside the money to pay for the current year's um, retiree costs. And the future years were just sort of left to be considered in the future. But we now have a method of accounting for all of the costs. We have an actuary that comes in and looks at all the current employees, the future employees we have, their ages, how long they're going to be working, what their rate, wage increases are going to be, all of the detail that can, together can calculate the future costs of the retirement system. And then the um, the actuary then takes the present value of that, reduces it back to the to the present, uh, the, the, sort of discounts it back to the present value, and we have a lump sum number, and that's called, called the um, the actuarial uh, liability, and um, that is offset by the investments the town has made, and the remaining part is the unfunded amortized actuarial actuarial liability. Um, and that's what we have to fund. And so you can think about this as a, a mortgage payment and the, and the state and the, and the retirement board want us to pay it off in about 10 years. So it's a, think about it as a big fat 10 year mortgage. And after 10 years, you get to the self-funding date, which means that the annual contributions are uh, by the employees, et cetera, are sort of funding themselves, the town and the employees numbers. Both the OPEB, the other uh, post-employment benefits, which is basically healthcare, and the Arlington Contributory Retirement Plans each have a separate um, un unamortized actuarial uh, liability. So um, let, let's talk about the uh, contributory retirement system first. This is something we've dealt with over the years in a, in a methodology that was set up by a former chair, um, Al Tassi, um, probably 20 years ago. And at one time we were paid, th this uh, fund was set up for employees who worked for the town before 1939. So by the time the 1970s or 1980s came around, most of those employees had been deceased, but there were still some members and their survivors in the fund. And at one point, uh, let me just say speculatively 2002, we were making payments of uh, $500,000 a year to those people. And the finance committee determined that uh, if we um, continue to allocate that $500,000 towards the retirees, but as the demand on the 500,000 went down because of uh, the members passing away, the balance, the difference between the benefits to the surviving employees and the $500,000 would go into the OPEB fund. And, th and that way we started to fund the, um, the OPEB uh, trust fund. This is primarily a healthcare um, obligation or liability. And it currently has a value of around, um, uh, cur the current uh, investment value is around $20 million and the unfunded actuarial liability is 191 million as it shows in this chart. So every year in a town meeting, we have a, a warrant article that transfers a certain amount of money to this OPEB fund. Uh, so in the last couple of years, since all the retirees and their survivors have passed away, we've been putting the full $500,000 into the fund. Plus the select board made an agreement with the retirees when we created the, um, uh, GIC program that that they would we would additionally put $155,000 in, and when we were self-insured, we had a health insurance trust fund which had at various times between five and ten million dollars in the trust fund. But we were self-insured, so we had to take money out of that fund every year to pay uh, the, the employees' health costs. When we went to GIC, we started. Uh, taking money out of that fund because it was no longer required. In other words, as the liabilities from that fund diminished, we we could we could use it. And we started 
uh, contributing that to uh, other um, costs. And right now there's um, about $1,462,000 uh, in that fund. And the town manager uh, has recommended, and this health, this health insurance trust fund, by the way, is more or less a bank account. You know, it's, it's, it's make, earning very little. So he's recommended uh, transferring most of that to the um, OPEB, um, OPEB fund and leaving a $50,000 in there just in case there are some claims from the pre-GIC period, which nobody expects. So what we are recommending under article um, 57 is a, a total uh, transfer of $2,067,454 to the OPEB fund from um, in, in the breakdown, as I described, $500,000, $155,000, and $1,412,454. Um, so, um, Madam Chairman, if I can make a motion for that, could we dispense with this at this time? Go ahead, Charlie. So I move that um, the committee approved the $2,067,454. Second. Okay. Um, I just want to point out that I, I believe I sent everyone a memo from um, um, the town manager on the topic of um, the 1.4 million um, shift from the trust fund to OPEB. Um, so um, some more detail on that. Um, discussion, Al Jones. Hi, thank you. Um, it certainly makes sense to move the million four from a relatively conservative investments into more aggressive investments to get a little more, more return on the money. But I'm wondering if it would make any sense to then sort of reduce the OPEB contribution for the next two years to keep on the same timeline. Um, in other words, if, if we you know, we're typically putting in six, seven hundred thousand dollars, and the million four is sort of like two years worth of OPEB. We could mm -hmm. accelerate the payments a million four this year and then not contribute anything to OPEB for the next two years and then pick back up again. And I don't know if that makes any sense or not, or if, it, if it's a benefit to accelerate the uh, OPEB uh, payoff. Um, may, may I answer that, Madam Chair? Yes, please. Um, I, I think the first of all, the the uh, um, the five hundred thousand dollars that we're transferring has has been a long time practice of town meeting the the manager and finance committee, so I, it's a it's a very good transition and we have a pretty large uh, unfunded liability and we are funding that far from the rate of a ten year amortization. I mean, at the rate that we're putting in there, it's we're the, if you look back into the other documents that I sent out last week, um, you know, the, if you're funding the OPEB liability at an aggressive uh, rate, then you can discount that liability at a, essentially 7%, which is more or less what you make in investments. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're nowhere near that. So we have to, we have to discount it at the town's cost of funds, which are, you know, municipal bond type numbers around one or 2%. So the balance sheet liability is quite large. Mm -hmm. So I think um, moving away from that uh, practice that we have of the $655,000 is not, I wouldn't recommend that as a, as a solution here. And, and in fact, when we, if we did that, and then we go back to trying to, to uh, bring those contributions back, you know, you know, we're opening ourselves to another uh, budget battle. And I think that's not the right direction to go in. That's just my opinion. Okay, thank you. Jennifer? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so just a couple of big picture questions. Um, so one of the things that we saw in the original presentation was the effect of, of sort of our current practice and then what happens when we do the COLA increase. And I'm wondering, what happens if we add this 1.4 million? I mean, obviously 
it shortens the the time period. Actually, uh, that's a good question, and I'm glad you glad you asked that, Jennifer. Let me make the distinction here that this uh, this is the uh, shoot. Sorry. This is the Arlington. Uh, this is the contributory retirement summary uh, fund. Okay, it's different from the Arlington non-contributory. Uh, I'm sorry. This is the non-contributory retirement fund that we're talking about. That five hundred thousand okay. dollars, and 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 we're putting it into the other post-employment benefits, which is a different liability than the retirement fund. Okay, I think I didn't understand that. Okay. So so we'll be talking about that practice after we get through this subject. Got it. Um, and then so the other big picture question in the memo from the town ma uh, manager um, was the su suggestion that we keep the contribution at close to a million. So they're therefore sort of find an extra 300,000. Is there any sort of idea of where to find that from? Uh, I, I have no idea. Uh, I mean, I think what we sh should be doing is just planning to contribute the 655000 If, you know, this, this liability is not going to go away in a flash, okay? However, if we continue to fund the uh, contributory retirement pension the way we are funding it, we will be at a self-funding point in 10 years, okay? At that point, it might be appropriate with the support of the Finance Committee and the Select Board and and whoever town meeting of course to continue that level of funding but instead of having that uh, several million dollars a year go into the contributory retirement we use it to fund the opeb um, liability but that's a decision for the future okay thanks uh, and annie so we have a legal obligation to fund the retirement plan in the way that we're funding it. In other words, to, to fund the full liability and to be able to always say that we can pay it. Last I heard, we don't have a similar legal obligation with regard to OPEB. So what we are doing is we are funding OPEB in anticipation of said legal obligation being imposed upon us. So... Um. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, so so for that reason, Charlie, I agree with you that we should continue to fund at the level we're funding at, despite this little shot of cash that's coming from the the health insurance trust fund. Um, and you know that at some point in the future we're going to have to consider increasing it, especially if it becomes clear that the legal imposition is going to be um, looming at some point. Am I making sense? Uh, yes. And Annie, um, this is a, uh, I, I, I hate not to use the word complex, but a, a sort of a broad subject. But the, um, the, there is not a, man, a state mandated rule that says we have to fund this. You're, you're absolutely correct. Okay. However, the Government Standards Accounting Board requires us to, to list this as a balance sheet liability. So yeah. it has an effect on the town's financial strength, ability to get a bond rating, et cetera. Okay. And, and in addition, uh, while the, I, I believe that I'm, you know, practicing law without a license here, but I believe that um, the select board has the right to say tomorrow, we're not going to pay for the retirees' health insurance anymore. Mm -hmm. But the common expectation, I think, of most people that are in this business is that if we did that, we immediately would have a labor union litigation and the courts would force us to pay that. Okay. So so we have the liability. We are spending the money annually. The, the government standards accounting board says we have to put it on the balance sheet. So mm -hmm. it's it's a it's in effect a mandate without a mandate. You know it, it's it's, it's like a, a mandate without the final step of the legislation. Right. I understand that. I guess what I'm saying, Charlie, is that we have flexibility about how big a contribution we make and when we fully fund this at the moment. That at, flexibility the, we at the make. moment we do, yes. And you're saying this has an effect on our bond rating, but our bond rating is really good. What do you, can you quantify that effect? No, I can't. 
I mean, I, I'm sure I could if I, if I consulted with Dean Carmen and spent a lot of time at it, but I can't. All right. Well, that might be, my head. might be an off-season thing to try to figure out. I don't yeah. talk to Dean about it. Um, but I guess my point for the Finance Committee is if you're trying to balance competing interests here, that is uh, fiscal conservatism with a small c um, against um, you know our current spending needs or community needs or things the community is interested in us spending money on. I think what we're doing right now is got the right balance. Reducing that funding even for a couple of years would seem to me like not a great idea. Increasing that funding at the expense of other things is not a choice that I would support right at the moment, but it's certainly something we're going to face at some point um, because of that looming possibility that the state will actually require us to fund in the same way they're requiring us to fund retirement. Yes. So, <laughs> and, and, and I might point out on the 1.4 million, we can't spend that. You know, we couldn't we couldn't go out and buy fire trucks with that. This money has to be used for health care because it comes from the employees health care deductions. So it's, gotcha. it's got to go back into that. Gotcha. OK, cool. Right. This this money can't be used any other way than this. Pretty much. That is all my questions and all my soapbox speech for the night. All right, Carolyn. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so the 655 has not increased in over a decade because I started OPEB 10 years ago, and this is the exact same amount it was 10 years ago. So that, that amount hasn't increased, and I'm just going to tease Charlie a bit because the story has totally changed since 10 years ago when we started this. He was all for keeping this funding as low as possible, and I'll leave it at that unless he wants to come back and with a with a rebuttal to my comment, but um, there you have it. I have, I have no rebuttal. I just get older. <laughs> right, John? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> I, I have a, just a couple um, big picture questions just to confirm my understanding here. So there's two different uh, liabilities here. And I think you refer to one as the non-contributory and the other is a contributory. The non-contributory is the, the OPEB, which if, if I understand correctly, that's, that's essentially healthcare costs for current, for future retirees, for retirees. Uh, and then. Hey, John, let me, let me just stop you there for a second and clarify. I'm sorry if I've contributed yeah. to confusion here. The, the, the non-contributory retirement system we, we no longer have any liability. All of those people are deceased. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Got All it. right. The $500,000 is what we were paying them 10 or 15 years ago. And what we've done is we've just continued at that expense level, but shifted the money into the OPEB liability fund. Got it. So I won't use the words, non. I won't use those words. I'll use the words OPEB and retirement, but those two in and of themselves, the OPEB and the retirement, are two very separate liabilities, very Correct. distinct liabilities. One seems the OPEB seems to be much larger. It runs, you know, upwards to like two hundred million, whereas the pension liability runs closer to one hundred and twenty. I mean, give or take, depending on which one you're looking at. I'm looking at like the ones you sent out last week and the the FY twenty two. But either way, it's uh, the retirement ballpark one hundred and twenty, the OPEB ballpark two hundred. Yes, but that the comments, the remarks I made just a minute or two ago about the discount rate uh, is what comes into play here, because yeah. we are only putting in this six hundred and fifty five thousand dollars a year. We are not allowed to discount it at the market rate of seven percent. Yeah, we yeah. And have to I, discount it at two percent. So that distorts the size of the liability. Yeah. And I, I, I that that was my impression as well, is that the OPEB liabilities is a lot is a lot more um of is is a lot wider of a get of an estimate not as not as is a uh, specific whereas a pension liability it's money in money out the actuaries can get it down pretty closely whereas this health care you know i noticed in the information you sent out last week there was actually a 57 million dollar drop in the liability just because they changed 
the assumption of future healthcare costs. They said, at first they were saying they were gonna rate, future healthcare costs are gonna go up by seven and a half percent a year. And then they said, all right, future healthcare costs are only gonna go up by 5% a year. And that resulted in a $57 million drop in this OPEB liability. So I think that confirms what you're saying is that the oh, it, it's um it's not as specific. It's more like, what's it gonna cost to provide health insurance for future retirees? Here's our best estimate, where it's not as specific as the, uh, the pension liability. Is that correct? It, it, uh, I would say, generally speaking, yes. Yeah, got it. And then the only other thing I want to confirm my understanding is, you know, as far as this money going into the uh, OPEB fund, this two million dollars, uh, you know, if, if we were comparing the two different liabilities, the pension and the OPEB, I would think another thing that would go into this would be the insurance costs, because we are currently paying insurance for all of our retirees. And I think those insurance costs come out of just the regular insurance budget. So if, if you retired from the town 10 years ago, the costs of your insurance are not certainly not coming out of that $2 million. It's coming out of, I think, the insurance budget. Is that correct? That's correct. But, yeah. but what, this, what this money is going towards is the future health insurance costs of the retirees the current and the future retirees. There's no money coming out of the fund yet because they're just not taking the money out. It's $20 million. It's, it's, it's got to grow to become a, a, you know, a more significant pot before we can start to take money out the way we do with the uh, pension fund. Got it, got it. And so I, I, the way I see it maybe is, is that this is almost a buffer. So we're continuing to currently fund all of the retirees' health insurance costs. Not, not insurance. all, uh, not all of it, because some of it is 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 Medicare. Okay, and this this will come into play, you know, 10, five, 10 years down the road when just healthcare costs get too too exorbitant. Then fortunately, we will have this. That's right. That's correct. Yeah, got it. Got it. Okay, great. So yeah, I, I just wanted to confirm that you know the health insurance costs for the future retirees were coming out of a different a different line item. Um, but yeah, that was very helpful. Thank you. Shane. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Charlie, uh, for a thorough presentation. My question, I, I don't think we're being asked to approve this, but I read the memo and it says they're going to move the OPEB fund into the state print fund and we're going to get, we're told that we're going to get a better return. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that and if uh, we're yeah. get a better, better we, return from the state? We, that's a sort of independent subject. Okay. And, and uh, can we talk about that after we finish the contributory retirement board? Sure. I mean, it, it's really a distinct issue and it's it's sort of uh, not directly a financial issue where this is a budgetary issue. Okay. All right, so right now before us is um, Article 57 of the draft warrant. Any other questions, comments? John, I see your hand is up. Is that from prior? Okay. All right. So, um, Charlie, do you have a motion? Uh, yes, I'm. I think I, I thought I moved it, but I'll move the two million sixty-seven thousand four hundred fifty-four dollars uh, under Article Fifty-Seven. Second. All right, it has been moved and seconded. Um, any further discussion? All right, seeing no hands, we'll go to a vote. Jordan is absent. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Uh, yes. Sophie? Yes. Ryan isn't here. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy isn't here. Al Tosti? Yes. Dean is not here. Dave McKenna? I'm going to have to abstain. Fourteen votes in the affirmative. No. 
net, uh, no votes and one abstention. So Article 57 then passes. Um, what else do you have, Charlie? Uh, so I'd like to move on now to the non-contributory, I'm sorry, to the contributory requirement system, the Arlington contributory requirement retirement uh, system. So um, let me just. So um, this is managed by the Arlington Contributory Retirement Board. Rich Greco is the administrator. There's also an assistant. Um, and then the members of the board are Ida Cody, the comptroller ex officio. Uh, Fred Fantini, uh, who is a former uh, assistant treasurer of the town, a resident of Cambridge. Um, Kenneth Hughes, a former employee of the town. He was in the police force and he is currently the chair. Uh, Robert Jefferson, I believe, is the employee elected representative and um, he is the former fire chief. And Richard Keshin is a attorney in town and has been on the board um, for a number of years. Um, one of the members, probably Richard Keshian, is appointed by the, uh, I think it's the governor, and the others are appointed by um, the other members of, of the board. So, um, and one member is appointed by the, um, uh, elected by the uh, employees. So, Charlie, excuse me. Yes. Charlie, for your information, two members are elected. Okay, sorry, two and, members are and Hughes and, and Robert Jefferson. Robert Jefferson, okay, thank you. Thank you, David. So um, let, let me give you a few uh, definitions here so we can thoroughly confuse ourselves. Um, the, the state manages the investments and it's underneath a, an administration commission called PERAC, the Public Employee Retirement Administration Commission. It's a state authority. And it was put in place, oh, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago after some uh, famous um, corruption exposés amongst various uh, pension boards. Then there's something called PRIM, which is the Massachusetts Pension Reserves Investment Management Board. This is a, a board of professional uh, managers um, headed by a gentleman, I think his first name is uh, William, his last name is Trotsky. And he is a, uh, you know, a very, um, you know, he, he, he would be working on Wall Street or working for the Harvard Trust Fund or something like that if he wasn't working in this task. He leads this board and they manage where this money goes in, in, in the marketplace. And then the, the PRIT is actually the trust itself. It's the, it's the investments and they refer to that as the uh, Pension Reserves Investment Trust. And then there's another... Uh, abbreviation here called the M&T Bank. That's a, a custodial bank that actually has moves money in and out. It's, you, you, in order to do anything with this money, you have to have somebody who's who can transfer it to and from the town, et cetera. And that's what the M&T Bank does. And then finally, uh, when we refer to the unamortized um, um, actuarial liability and other uh, related issues, these, these, uh, this information is prepared by Stone Consulting, which is an independent uh, firm, which is Arlington's actuarial advisor. So they, they pull all the information together, the investments, the employee accounts, et cetera, and they make up a series of reports, which the uh, Contributory Retirement Board uses to make its decisions. The board um, you know, provides money both to the, to the um, PRIT to, to or, or the PRIM to invest in the PRIT and get a return. And the, the board and the administrator also uh, administer the distribution of funds on a monthly basis to, to the retirees. So um, this is a, just a snapshot of the system, of the retirement system and uh, on 22 versus 21. And by the way, all of the, just to thoroughly uh, confuse us all one more step, you can't really compare these on a fiscal year basis because all of these um, analyses are done on a calendar year basis. So the latest data we have is January 1st, 2022. They're just now compiling the data from, from um, January 1st, 2023. So this tells you how many active members there are in the reti active retirees. There are 808. 
Um, and then um, there are also disabled retirees, 619. And then there are um, inactives. Inactive are, are people who were in the retirement system and left the, the town. And they went and did something else, but they haven't taken their money out. So they're, they're, the money that they've put in is, is also a liability that the town faces, okay? Um, <clears throat> then the, the normal cost is the, is the cost that the town has to contribute uh, on an annual basis to meet its obligations, current obligations. And then there are the funds that they contribute to help work down the, um, the liability. So the, um, the total uh, liability uh, is $323 million. The, this is the total liability that has been computed by the actuary as of the 1st of January, 2022. And then the actuarial value of the assets, and this number, by the way, has probably gone down today, but this is what it was sort of 15 months ago, was 203 million. So that leaves the unfunded actual actuarial reliability of 119 million. So this 119 million, actually 120 million, is what we're paying down on an annual basis with this uh, contribution that we vote under, under the, the budget. And there's more detail on this in, the, in those documents that I uh, passed out the other day that were prepared by the actuary or by the retirement board. Uh, this is a snapshot that the, just the various uh, extracted from the previous page that the retirement board provides the PARAC just to let everybody know what's going on. Here's a relevant number. They assume an investment return of 7% a year, okay? So, uh, and they also assume that the, the rate of salary increase of, of uh, current employees is 4%. And, and, you know, why are we concerned about that? Well, we're concerned because if somebody is 15 years away from retirement and that person is making, say, uh, $70,000 a year, that salary each year is going to go up by 4%. So the retirement fund is going to be liable for the higher salary 10 or 15 years out, which has increased at this, this 4%. So uh, all of these things, including the age of the employees and how long they've worked, et cetera, play into the actuarial calculations. And this is just a summary of the, um, the, the uh, accrued liability over the last three years or five years actually, and then the unfunded liability. And you can see that the unfunded liability was lower in 2017 when COVID came around um, and we had some drop in the market, the, li the liability went up and now it's gone back down through a combination of performance. But we also know since the end of uh, 2022 or it may maybe mid 22 with the increase in inflation, there's been a drop in the market. So probably this unfunded liability is gonna go up again. So this is the funding schedule that we as finance committee members and town meeting members have to deal with. Now, this is the sc schedule that the actuary um, prepares and provides a report that goes to PARAC and then PARAC approves it after they do their due diligence. But it says that if we make these payments uh, of contributions of around um, you know, starting in 2024 of 16 million, then seven, increasing 5%, increasing 5.5% a year. By the time the 2034 comes around, it's going to be a fully uh, self-funded um, liability. Okay. Now, um, I have to say, uh, sounding a little bit, we're thinking about uh, Carolyn's comments of days of yore. Um, and at one time we had a higher, we had a, uh, a lower increase rate. And then the re retirement board came and said they wanted to increase the rate. So we went up to 6%. And then recently the town manager and retirement board agreed to go back to the 5.5%. And that increase rate has been approved by the, um, uh, by PEREC for the, for this schedule. Now, um, just a, a side comment here. Uh, again, I'm practicing law without a license, but the law says 
um, uh, in, in my layman's terms, that the retirement board has priority over any other expense of the town. In other words, the town has a, a hard obligation to meet these retirement costs. And in principle, if the town decided next year that we wanted to increase the number of fire trucks or you know build another building and not pay that 16 million or 17 million, the retirement board could take us to court and would be granted first dibs on that on those funds. So this is a this is a pretty serious obligation that the town has to deal with year in and year out. Uh, we don't have that same hard obligation, which uh, John noted earlier, with uh, the OPEB. The OPEB is a, obligation is it's a liability, but it's not quite as strong as the um, Arlington, Arlington Contributory Retirement System obligation. So um, after doing all the auditing and um, you know discussions with the retirement board and the uh, actuary, et cetera, PERAC prepares a letter which it sends to the to the retirement board, and it says that Arlington has to contribute 16 uh, million. I can't even read it on my screen, but um, 60, 60 million this year. And a certain percentage of that is due from the housing authority. So this is not the number that that we're dealing with in the finance committee. We're dealing with the the number of uh, 15 million 676 uh, 279. That's the that's what we have to present to town meeting. The Arlington Housing Authority is a semi-independent legal body that uh, addresses its own uh, financial obligations. So, in summary, what we're recommending for this vote is that um, this number, 15,676,729, is what PARAC is looking for the town to contribute. And of that, um, 1,542,544 is offsets principally from uh, the water and sewer enterprise funds. There may be a, some other smaller enterprise fund uh, contribution there, but that's principally from water and sewer, which as you know, comes from uh, user fees as opposed to taxation. So the taxation total is 14,133,735. Fourteen million one hundred thirty-three thousand seven hundred thirty-five dollars, and uh, with and that in practice represents a five point seven three percent increase uh, over uh, last year. And the difference between the five percent and the uh, five point five percent and the five point seven percent has to do with the effect of the um, most of most of it has to do with the effect of the offsets. So I think that's uh, what I wanted to say about the. Um, contributory retirement uh, budget article. You're on mute, Christine. I just want to point out what you are presenting, Charlie, is slightly different than what is in our budget book due to, I think it's the offset amount is slightly higher. By, I think, uh, In the budget book, the offset is 1542404. Um, I got this from the town manager's spreadsheets. So um, I didn't check to see if there was a difference between their spreadsheets and the budget book. So, uh, Madam Chair, what I would recommend here is that we vote as presented here. We're talking about a difference of four hundred dollars, which is right. not a material difference. And um, you know, with the permission of the committee, we can investigate the difference between the town manager's spreadsheets and the town manager budget book, and uh, make the final correction. Then we'll update the committee. I think that would be a good idea. So, Charlie has made a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right, so uh, questions, um, comments, Shane. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Charlie, for another uh, quality pr presentation. Uh, 
why did we reduce the increase from six to five and a half? And number one, number two, if we assume a 7% increase every year, do we rate of return? Do we normally get in that range? Um, actually, let's see. Let me uh, see, if, did I? Uh, if you look in, if you look in the other documents, one of the other documents that I, the, the, the one that uh, has a lot of sheets in it, there's a historical uh, performance of the PERAC uh, fund. And uh, just from memory, the 10 year performance is um, almost 9%, it's 8.8%. The, you know, it goes up and down over the years, but in the long term, uh, they have been exceeding that 7% rate. Um, what, the reason why the, um, the town manager and the retirement board negotiated a lower uh, con increase in contribution was because the, uh, the returns prior to uh, this year were, were higher. You know, if the, if the, uh, the ter returns from the fund come in higher, then the future obligation, the net obligation is lower. So they could lower the growth rate in the contribution to 5.5% and still make the 10 year amortization target. Thank you, Charlie. John. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, Charlie, for the, <clears throat> the continued presentation. Uh, so just following along the last question, you kind of confirming my, my understanding here. So first of all, this is, you know, now we're talking about just straight pensions, which is primarily just kind of money in, money out. So I assume, you know, these these numbers, you know, pretty solid. The actuaries can get these things pretty accurate from year to year. Um, now, but the, so the one thing I, I want to confirm is that the 15.6 million that the town is contributing here, that's, that's everything that the town is contributing paying towards pensions this year. Like in other words, there's no other line item where we're paying pensions on a current basis. The 15 million covers our future liabilities and our current year liabilities. That's correct. That's what I thought. The future liabilities according to that uh, amortization schedule that is presented on the previous slide. Yeah, it, it, and again, just to help me keep this straight. So if we compare that to the health insurance, you know, I think, you know, we approved roughly 2 million to do apples and apples, you'd actually say the two million that we contributed to the health insurance plus whatever we're paying on a year-to-year -year base on the current year for health insurance. So, I mean, they may be even a lot. Those two numbers might even be a little bit closer if you compare the pension and the health insurance. That's, so that's correct. It's not. In other words, this contribution is not the same as the OPEB contribution that we're making. The OPEB contribution in Article, um, what was it, fifty-seven? Is, is, is basically um, the town making a commitment to work that liability down, but not trying to address it with the same degree of rigor that it is required to show on the retirement system. Got it. Yep, that, that was my understanding. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? So I believe we have a motion for a um, to approve the retirement budget taxation total um, amount of fourteen million one hundred thirty three thousand seven hundred thirty five dollars. I believe that was seconded. Correct. Yes. Um, any further discussion before we take a vote on the retirement budget? All right. Uh, Jordan is not here. Shane? Yes. Shane? Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Jordan's not here. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yeah, following Dave's lead, I'm going to recuse myself on this one also. Okay. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. 
Dean's not here. El Tosti? Yes. Dean's not here. And Dave? I will abstain, please. Thirteen votes in the affirmative, no negative, and two abstentions. The retirement budget passes. Before we move on, um, Josh, um, would you like to change your vote for the last article, Article Fifty Seven? Yeah, I'll, I'll abstain on that one also. Okay, I, I'm a, a beneficiary of this. So, Madam Chair, yes, go ahead, Charlie. Um, can I just address the question raised by Shane earlier yes. with, with respect to the change in the where the money goes? Please. So, so uh, is my screen still being shared? Yes. Yeah. Does it say draft warrant article 20? No. <laughs> okay, hang on a second. I got to stop. The presentation. And then I have to start again here. Hang on. How's that? Got it. Okay. So um, the Article 20 is for the town to accept uh, legislation, uh, Section 32B, or, or General Law 32B, Section 20, OPEB trust funds. So basically, um, uh, Shane raised the question before uh, that the town wants to move the OPEB money to a more, uh, to, a, to an environment that has a higher rate of return. The money right now is being managed by a company called Makita. And it's a $20 million fund and it's not, you know, it's not such, it's not such a big deal in the, in the high finance world. And we don't get uh, returns that are what we call spectacular. And like, eight, you know, it's average eight or 9% a year for 10 years is pretty, pretty spectacular, okay. So um, th what the town would like to do is move that money to the um, PRIT trust fund run by PRIM under the management of PERAC, okay? So to do that, the town has to accept this legislation. The PRIM people will not accept any money that hasn't been uh, you know, under this um, legislation. This is, exact, this is exactly, I mean, it's a different, um, a different section, but it's exactly the same wording and, and so forth of the legislation that we accepted when the um, contributory retirement funds went to PRIM, okay? So uh, the, the nut of it is here that um, according to the law, the, 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 uh, the, the local management, which is the select board, right? They can designate um, a trustee or a board of trustees that have general supervision um, they may designate uh, the treasurer as a custodian, or they may designate the, cust the treasurer as a custodian and the retirement board as the board of trustees, or they can create a new uh, board of trustees for, for this money. Um, so first of all, uh, I did have a conversation today with the chair of the contributory retirement board. And they have requested that their name be taken off the draft article and that the town manager make the request. And, the, and as I understand it, the town manager and the retirement board have agreed that the treasurer will be the custodian of the funds. And the treasurer is the custodian of the retirement funds now. So there's no there would be no change between the, how the retirement funds are handled and how the OPEB funds will be handled. And that the uh, Arlington Contributory Retirement Board be the um, uh, board of trustees for the OPEB fund. And that's more or less what's going on right now. So um, that's really, Shane, the answer to your question, where this is headed. And uh, the town manager is in favor of it. It mirrors the retirement board operations that we have, but it's not a financial article. It's a policy article for the select board to present. Does that answer your question, Shane? Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead, right. Shane. Thank you, Charlie. I, I think so. So the, just the, can you just the 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 treasurer will be the custodian, but the board, the retirement board, will remain the fiduciary have the fiduciary duty to the retirees, and the money will be managed by. Yeah, what what the custodian means is that 
when they move money from somewhere, uh, when the, when the uh, retirement board wants to move money from one account to another, for example, right now to pay the retirees, they have to fill out what's called a warrant. I have never seen one, but that's what they call it. And they bring it over to the treasurer and the treasurer signs the warrant and sends it to the bank. Okay, so it's basically getting an extra set of eyes on the money as a method of control. Thanks, Charlie. All right, so Charlie, you are, what you're saying is that you've explained um, Article 20, but you, you're you saying that this is not a financial article and and as such, we shouldn't, uh, have, we don't have to take a well, position. Well, Al, Al, actually, Al's asking that, Al, you know, it's, it was, he is, he's already basically made that decision. I'm just supporting it. All right. All right. Any questions on what Charlie just explained? All right. Anything else, Charlie? That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlie, for a great uh, presentation. Um, I appreciate it. All right. So we've done um, the retirement budget. Um, and I think we have the IT budget ready to present, correct, Topher? Yes. All right, take it away. All right. Um, Tara, should I share my screen? Um, it's up to you. I'm happy to, or or if you want to, but you should have permission to do so. Let's see if I have permission to do this. One sec. All right. And I believe I do. And everybody, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Let me just turn that into a slideshow. Or not, it doesn't want to do that. All right, I'll do the best I can. All right, so <clears throat> the IT budget. Um, so first, um, we had a meeting with IT on the 13th, attending from the Finance Committee were myself, Charlie, and Al, uh, and then Patricia Shepard, who's the CIO and uh, runs IT, and Julie Wayman, the Budget Director, who you all know. Um, <clears throat> this was the updated IT budget, um, which I'll talk about various aspects of, Alan, you can double check, but I'm pretty sure I pulled the most recent numbers. So <clears throat> we'll refer back to this. Um, you know, I'll go through what I think are some of the highlight has salient points, and if there's other questions, we can, we can drill into them. Um, so first on the positions in it for the salaries and ridges, um, a couple, <clears throat> couple open positions right now. Um, they did fill a project manager business analyst role in December, but there was now a retirement, so there's another position open. So they're basically down a project manager, which will um, can factor into um, some of their projects and what they can do and what they can't do right now. Um, they're looking for a manager of enterprise applications. They haven't found anyone who will take the job at the current salary range. Uh, they've tweaked the job description. They have not adjusted the salary range and they've reposted it. And then just this is semi-historical, but the manager of GIS moved from IT to DPW for public uh, works in last year. That was a footnote in the report last year. Um, <clears throat> Alan, that Al Tosti had asked about sort of showing the budget changes. So Patricia prepared this slide. Um, so it's money they didn't spend in 2022 that they're applying to 2023. Um, there was a couple items here that she highlighted. One was not, was the, uh, <clears throat> I'll look through, I guess she calls it 0365, the um, Microsoft 365 licensing. There was 60,000 that they didn't spend. So they're, I guess, moving that forward for the ongoing licensing. And there was 40,000 for email that they didn't spend. So they're putting that in to support this migration to, to Microsoft. Um, <clears throat> was a question about the license breakdown for Microsoft 365. 
um, from Alan Jones. And so this was the breakdown she gave me. So there's different levels here of, of um, <clears throat> licensing. There's, you know, the online only, then there's having a desktop, and then there's the frontline worker of mobile apps. So this is just the breakdown of those, um, to the 62,000 that we're spending on licensing, um, <clears throat> you know, and, and what those are. And I've, I've put this presentation in the uh, SharePoint, so people can refer to this and pull pull these numbers if they, if they want to. Um, so our license costs, you know, we're break down. So if we go back to the, the software, so not, not Munis, but the software maintenance, that was some of those licensing costs. Um, telephone expenses is another good size one. Now it went down. Why did it go down? Because uh, Tricia made a decision to move some of this to network maintenance. Uh, the voice over IP in particular, she felt is more of a networking cost. Um, but that does leave the landlines from RCN and Verizon mobile lines for our work, mobile phones. And there was an ask request for a breakdown of that. So that's where there's 20,000 that goes to landline centric lines. And I guess the elevators have to have Phones. And then there's um, the RCN breakdown um, and land, some landlines, some for the fire, the police department, the fire department, the public schools. So that's that breakdown. Um, the network maintenance is an annually an annual software cost. It includes some things like Comcast, web licenses, our backup solution, and Barracuda, which some of you may have encountered as an email, as an email filter, can be pretty aggressive. Um, so that's where the network maintenance comes from. Uh, there was a question on training, like where does that go? What do we do with that? Um, the Munis conference is one. Um, they want to continue to learn Munis as well as other professional development. As you can imagine, the IT staff has to master new tools each time. I think 10K for each of these is actually pretty modest and they didn't use all their this FY22 budget. Um, consulting, um, this seemed to be mainly, um, the DPW has been automating water and sewer, it should be billing, not building, and meter reading. Um, so there's two developers that are integrating that. Um, there's support for hybrid meetings, of course, as we know, that's been a hot topic. And I guess they are putting the secure trash disposal under, under consulting. Um, another line item that's come up is Informix. Uh, why haven't we gotten rid of this? Um, that came up. Um, this has a, basically is wrapped up in um, the Munis utility building. Basically that it's moving to Munis utility building. So billing rather, so Munis utility billing, that's a tongue twister. Um, it has three years of data right now. And the DPW wants to view the legacy system for longer. And Informix for those who don't know is a database. So it requires us to have Informix. Um, we did ask, you know, when, when can this go away? And this was a, a soft estimate, maybe next year, and Patricia was going to follow up with the DPW, Mike, Mr. Rademacher, uh, to try to nail down more of a plan on what, what they need and how long they think they'll need it. Um, she is currently at a conference, so um, I can I will follow up with her. I hope that we can maybe vote this without, you know, leave this as an item to just be <clears throat> followed up on and reported on. Um, so those were some of the line items that came up. Uh, then there's the projects that they they do, and we want sort of a general idea of the projects. So Munis is a biggie one, a big one. Um, she did report there's a Munis steering committee of super users, you know, town employees that are using this, that help look at things and figure out the project plans and what the priorities are. Um, we have a number of Munis modules, Munis being the general accounting system. Um, and there's one called general billing that we have purchased but haven't really moved forward with. Um, right now that's on hold. Uh, the work is scoped out, but it didn't make the overall priority list. 
This is also an area where having only one project manager is slowing it down. So they are working on hiring that other project manager. Um, there's no other modules apparently that are purchased but uninstalled. Um, there's something called position control, sort of an HR module that they're looking into. I don't think they've gotten yet. And then finally, they have to move to the new version of Munis uh, by December of 2023 because we use it for cash sharing for the treasurer's office and that generates W-2s, which are obviously going to be have to come out at the end of the year. Um, and Munis is cloud-based. We're moving, you know, that's generally the way the world goes right now. Um, but obviously there can be ad adapt adaptations and costs or, you know, work from the town side to, to go to the new version. So that's, that's the Munis picture at a high level. Um, finally, another project that gets asked about is, well, digitizing documents. You know, we wanna digitize those. We have tons of documents. Um, there is a project team, uh, the pilot. The first one is inspectional services. Um, there's about 10 processes and forms that you've ever had <laughs> worked on in your house, you know this. Um, and, so that's where they're starting. I think they set a nine month window or so to do that. And then probably the, the it's the health and human services, the town clerk's office, maybe the DPW. And she thought, again, very soft, rough estimate, you know, five or six years of total time to really get through everything that we could do um, with the current, current technology that we're using. Um, then other projects that came up, she said there's sort of a two year network, two to three year network roadmap that they're trying to do um, and upgrade, <clears throat> um, what upgrades they'll have to do, things like that. Um, then obviously we have a bunch of new buildings going on. We have the DPW and the new Grove Street campus. So there'll be infrastructure for that. And then of course the new high school is, as we know, we're going into phase, you know, phase two is well underway. Um, there'll be tech, technical infrastructure for that. So those are some of the high level projects that, 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 that IT is working on. Um, so that concludes my uh, general overview of this and the budget. Um, but if there's questions, we can delve into them. All right, thank you, Topher. Um, questions, Annie. So I got a couple. So the first one is, Topher, if you're going to go back and talk to them about Informix and you ask them whether or not they've done any kind of analysis of the relative cost of extracting all of that data and putting it in a cube somewhere and not keeping Informix as a way to be able to access that data. Okay, so just, yeah, just putting it in some read-only repository. Yeah, something, something else, some, some database we already have I, it may be too complicated because of table structure, but it's worth. Yeah, asking. yeah. I was going to say that that would strike me that the okay uh, um, the, the Informix line item here is if I can read my own screen mm -hmm. is seven thousand a year. All right, then so that's not going to go very far in terms of trying to convert even even if the table structures match probably between databases. All right. Well, at least they've gotten the cost down. Um, and then on the digitizing of documents, do you mean literally getting documents online that already exist, or are we talking about putting processes and forms online for people to fill out? I believe the latter. I don't know if this is really getting through the backlog of papers in the basement of town hall. Yeah, because we have this enormous backlog of information yeah. that we can't access that is a big bugaboo with me. Um, and then can you scroll back down to the project slides? There was another question I had you for you about the project slides. Sure. Did I like other projects? Oh, I know what I was going to ask. Do we have any idea how many servers we still own versus everything moving to the cloud? So I did not ask her that. Um, so, um, um, yeah, I can, I can, we can follow up on these questions. Yeah, we don't need to notch out the budget because of any of those questions. I just wanted to ask yeah. them. But um, thank you. Uh, Grant? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, it says revised budget. I just want to make sure and I can't read it. Could you just tell me what the offset amount is, please? Is it? Um, sure. Let's see if we can 
So you mean? The, the offset at the very bottom of the page. The current uh, year, there we go. Is uh, it yeah, two, yeah. four? Yeah, I understand it's hard to read. Just a second, my the screen is not cooperating. So 244855. Thank you. Okay, Matt. excellent. Thank you. All right, Al Jones. Hey, th thank you. I don't have a question. I just wanted to give a public shout out to Syed Kodier for managing the migration to Microsoft 365. I've done it a number of times myself on a much smaller scale. I appreciate the difficulty of forklifting all of that email over to it. So mm -hmm. I simply say, Syed, you did a great job. Yeah, it's gone smoothly too, because if it doesn't go smoothly, everything grinds to a halt. Yes, so. it was a very difficult, challenging job, and he, he did a great job. Thank you. Uh, Josh. Yeah, I, I should have uh, sent the, this question, but I'm just wondering, there's a few different lines where the budget for 23 and 24 is quite a bit higher than the actuals from prior years. Is that just because they're increasing their resources there or... Like for, as an example, network maintenance. Well, some of the network maintenance is because they shifted costs from the telephone expenses. So the voice over IP was bucketed in telephone expenses and it got shifted to network maintenance. And you can see that the telephone expenses went down. Okay. And the software so the maintenance case shift. The software maintenance is is uh because of Office 365, do you think? I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, um, Topher, do you have a motion? Sure. So I, um, I will move um, that we vote the total taxation uh, expense of one million one hundred fifty-four thousand three hundred twenty-five. Do I have a second? Second. second. Any other questions? or discussion about the IT budget. Right. So no hands will go to a vote. Uh, Jordan is not here. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Brian's not here. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John Griffin? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Annie? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. He's not here. Al Tosti? Yes. He's not here. Dave? Yes. All right. The IT budget has been approved unanimously. All right. Um, does anyone have any other budgets ready for tonight? When will the treasurer budget treasurer's budget be ready? Any estimate? I think that's Brian's. He's not here. Right. Um, Shane, how about public works and facilities? We're meeting this week with both of our department heads, but not till the end of the week. Um, so I think. We might be have a budget on Monday, depending on how those conversations go. I think we're doing capital planning on the eighth, though. So I don't think I'm not sure we can do anything else on the eighth. So we'll we'll do our very best uh, to sort of work through the weekend and see what we can get for Monday. Okay. And grant water and sewer, any estimate? Yeah, this has to be after uh, they make the insurance. Um, uh, adjustments it's sandy said that's supposed to be march first or so so i would think sometime um 13th or the 15th okay all right all right good all right we are scheduled to have minuteman come in on wednesday we'll 
We will be meeting in person uh, at the police station, the community safety building. And Annie, you had, you want to spend a few minutes talking about that in preparation for that. Just a couple of things. Can you all hear me? Yep. Okay, just a couple of things. One is that the presentation that they are going to make to us that has the Arlington specific information in it is in the folder that Tara pointed you to. It is the PowerPoint that says that ends with final dash Arlington. So the second is that if you have specific questions that you want them to be prepared to answer, I'd appreciate it if you could email me, email me in the next 24 hours so I can get them those questions. Um, I did ask about, you know, the basic stuff about how many of our students have applied and enrollment and acceptances and so on and so forth. But um, if you see specific questions in the numbers um, or have specific areas that you are concerned about from previous years, get me those questions so I can forward them to Dr. Dawson. Um, and then, Christine, I believe I told them that eight o'clock was fine, assuming we would have minutes to vote and so on and so forth. Um, but Tara, if you could make sure that they have correct directions for the meeting room. I mean, these, I don't think either Nikki or Dr. Dawson has been here before physically. Okay. Um, and let them know what the technology infrastructure is. I mean, I don't know whether you wanna run slides or you want them to connect their computer to the projector, but we'll want to be able to project the presentation in that room if at all possible. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I'll have a Zoom running in the background just to record everything. And um, we can just have them, um, I'll ask them to just have Zoom on their laptop if they don't wanna email the presentation in advance and then they just get like a, a key that they put in and then they can project to that neat board in there. The, the presentation is there. Oh yeah, I, I can just present it then, yeah. So I, that might be the easiest thing to do is to just have them call for next slide if that is okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it doesn't prevent you from taking minutes or if you want, I'll hop up front and run the slides or something. Um, if anybody has any questions now that you wanna convey to me, I would start taking notes. Um, but otherwise, getting an email would be appreciated. Charlie. Yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, Annie, the last couple of years, we had discussions with Miniman about um, <clears throat> the, uh, the the field costs and how they were going to get uh, be renting the fields out, mm -hmm. be paying for the additional investment that we put money up for last year or I can't forget what it was last year or the year before, but it was substantial funds and they were very uh, positive about their ability to, to lease the field out to other users and be interesting to know that we're actually getting those revenues and, and paying down those investments. So I asked them that question and I wasn't particularly happy with the answer. And I wanna do some follow-up through our email thread about that discussion about that, that funding, because my understanding is that what they are doing is entering into a long-term deal with another organization that is going to build out more athletic infrastructure, but that in entering into that long-term deal, they're leaving some revenue available for that organization. And the implication was that Dr. Dawson didn't realize that Dr. Boquillan had made this deal with us about using revenue to pay that debt back. So um, I'm counting on you to ask the hard questions, Charlie, but I'll go back and look at the email thread and see. Right, I'll, I'll ask. Dr. Green. Yeah, and it would be helpful, Annie, if you just let them know that I, there's going to be that question. <laughs> I did let them know, but I will follow up an email and say, hey, I know you're going to get this from the committee, so be prepared. Any other questions that you want Annie to take to them so that they will be prepared with the information when they meet with us on, on Wednesday? Josh. Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I can't remember, are they prohibited from joining GIC? I noticed their health insurance was going up like 10%. I don't know the answer to that question, but I could probably find it out. Okay. 
Thank you. I think this would be good a good opportunity if you just jot down these questions, yep. Annie, and we're not expecting you to be the to have the. Oh, no, I will answers. send them to them. Um, Topher. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so my question was: They talk about increasing the capacity of the school. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get a sense of how much they think they can do that. Um, I know their design capacity is 628, but they have almost, you know, they, I think that's 85% full. They've got close to 740, which would be 100%. They talk about a, an increase of 32 in slide 24, but are there any other increases? Just, you know, how much bigger do they think they can make the school, you know, without getting another debt exclusion, you know, another getting debt exclusion. Um, and what I'm really getting at here is, mm -hmm. what do we think the ceiling of Arlington student enrollment might end up being? You know, we might, it looks like they're going to pretty much member town only enrollment at this point, um, assuming maybe it's super popular and they even have to go to a lottery or something, but, you know, Arlington has a decent, per some percentage of the total student body right now. The school gets bigger. I mean, I'm just trying to get a sense of where our enrollment might, you know, have to level off, which would then affect how our assessment would eventually level off. Okay. So, got that. That's, well, that's, I have a couple. Sorry. We I did talk about that with them, but I want to give them the question the way that you just framed it, because it's not how I asked it. So okay. Um another couple of or another. One was on slide 23. They talk about grants. I'm just curious, is any of the SARPA money, you know, are these grants renewable? It's great that they're getting a lot of grant money, but, you know, can they, you know, count on that going forward? And then finally, um, on slide 26, just a comment, and I'm new to this, but it looks like they, they do have a fairly big OPEB need. They have very little in there versus what they think they need. So that... Um, this is what their plan is to, you know, address that. And those are my questions. All right. Thank you, Topher. El Tosti. Yeah, hi. <clears throat> I haven't had a chance to look at the uh, folder on this, but I'm assuming they have some comparative data on for student costs. Um, I mean, our problem with Minuteman over the years has always been it costs too much uh, versus, mm -hmm. you know, other uh, vocational schools. So I guess that's what I'd like to focus on. So you're interested in cost versus other vocational schools or versus the high school? Versus other vocational schools. And that's per pupil costs, exclusive of capital L? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Jennifer. Hi, thanks, Samantha. Um, So my question actually may be based on very old information, old discussions that I just haven't kept up with, but, but several years back, there was a discussion of selling part of the property when they moved the building. Is that off the table? Is there any talk now of selling any of the property? They, they didn't mention it. Um, but yeah, there's an interesting question there because there's a the old building was being torn down and there are fields being built. I don't know whether. Hmm. Again, this was maybe four years ago discussion, so I don't know. It maybe it got resolved in someone. I just don't haven't followed it. Yeah, I I may have something back in my notes, and they may have some information about this versus the athletic facility construction. Right. Um, so, yeah. thanks. Cool. I think I think this is helpful so that when people come in, including Minuteman as an example, to present to us, they're actually giving us the information that we want to hear, as opposed to giving us the presentation they want to present. So, yeah. um, so th th this is this is good. Thank you, Annie, for arming them um, with with these questions so that. Um, we, we get to hear what we want to hear. Topher, you have another um, suggested question? Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Sherry. One that came to mind as Jen was talking. 
Um, and that uh, Mr. and uh, Alan's question. Mine is sort of, this may be a broad question, but to what degree, I mean, they've talked, they've obviously they're a vocational school. So there's a number of you know trades and other majors, if you will, other concentrations that the students can do. But they've also talked a lot about moving to this academy model and college prep in the last few years. And but what do we have a sense of what, what how much how much overlap there is with the high school in terms of curriculum and what they offer? Well, I I I've done a couple of tours of that building and I have some information about that, but I think that's a good question to directly ask Dr. Dawson. Yeah, I'd be curious to hear their take on that. Because obviously you know, they have they will at least when Dr. Bulquillian was there, he would point out that 47% of their students are on an IEP. And that right. that is sort of part of their mission, right? Kids who don't fit the standard mold of the high school are often a good fit for Minuteman because of its learning methodologies. Yeah, I mean, what do we know what, I mean, this would be a public school question, but what percentage of our high school students are in some IEP or some, something like that? I don't know, but it's not 47%. No, it's not as many, but I'm just curious. Yeah. It's, it's around 15%, I believe. How many? 15. 15. 15? Okay. Thank you, John. It's helpful. All right. Al? Al Tosti? You're, you're muted, Al. Uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> Getting late. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a discussion going on, or uh, and I think uh, uh, on vocational schools as far as admissions, and the traditional admissions has been uh, based on attendance, grades, you know, mm -hmm. all the admission qualities to get into a select school, and a lot of people are pointing out that that often excludes a lot of kids who really have maybe have poor attendance and their grades aren't great, but they really should be going to a vocational school. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I'd, I'd be interested in seeing her reaction to that discussion. A little more philosophical than the nuts and bolts, but uh, it is a discussion that is ha happening right now. Yeah, I let me... Let me frame that up for her. Um, Carolyn. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, my question to them is, is, and they usually present this, is what percentage of the kids go on to college, go on to two-year programs, or go on to trade um, um, apprenticeships? And... Um, and then the other is, you know, the as Topher put it, the kids are half half time in academic, half time in trade. My understanding is that the the curriculum is exactly the same as at the high school, um, and I forget how they manage to cover most of the curriculum um, in that half one week on one week off model, but something along those lines. And Annie, you can answer that if you want right now. So I I believe they have to meet state standards, right. curriculum offerings. And I believe, could be wrong, but I think their students have got to pass MCAS. So in that sense, there's going to be curricular overlap. But um, I'm sure that Dr. Dawson would be happy. She'll be happier to talk about that than the field costs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. I will uh, frame that up. I, I think that we have proven that we have already read their materials and they could be assured that we have read what they have prepared and we are now eager to hear some additional information. Uh, and that's, and that's um, great of you to um, do that for us. Cool. Thank you. Uh, and this all to um, you know the budgets we haven't had haven't been presented 
um, get your questions to those groups um, so that they can be prepared to answer your, your, your questions. Um, all right. Um, and um, just really quick, Chris, just because I got a whole bunch of questions tonight doesn't mean that if you think of things offline, you shouldn't email them to me. I'm happy to keep forwarding things until we've covered all the bases. All right, so let's move on now. Um, let's talk about the warrant review. I forwarded um, what Al Tosti um, has um, recommended in terms of what we should be focusing on and, and what article articles we should be getting hearing from people on. Um, most of them are the town managers uh, articles and uh, there's one warrant proponent um, who we are trying to uh, schedule um, a, a meeting with. Um, I don't know. Is let me put let me put this question: Is is there any other warrant articles that? people feel that we should be holding a hearing on? Or are we fine with um, El Tasta's recommendations? Anybody? All right, great. So that's what we will do. We'll have the town manager in when we can schedule that. And that one proponent, warrant proponent, one warrant article proponent. Um, and then um, that's what we will be focusing on. Um, great. Uh, thank you very much, Al Tosti, for, for doing that and getting that to us. Um, that's been, that's very helpful. Um, all right, so we have, um, let's talk about our upcoming schedule. We have Minuteman on Wednesday. Um, I. Tara, I think we have arts and culture on Monday. Um, yes, and, and possibly the Community Preservation Act after that, but I will I will confirm right. that when that happens. Do have we gotten anything from arts and culture yet? No. Any any present? Okay. I can follow right. with them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You and I can talk um, about um, what we should be asking them to pro provide us. Uh, and the same with the uh, community pres preservation, if indeed they confirm for Monday. I um, have the document from the Community Preservation Act now. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. Is that, that's in SharePoint, right? Yeah, I just got it today. So I'll, I'll send it out when I send out the meeting materials for Wednesday. Great. All right. Um, and then next Wednesday, um, Tara, I mean, Carolyn, you're presenting a few budgets. And we, uh, we are tentatively planned for having capital planning in. Yeah, I will um, have met with HR the day before, so I should be able to do both HR and reclass. Okay. Altas, do you have a hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I could get health insurance in on either the uh, 327 or 329. Why don't we pencil that in for 327? Thank you. All right, uh, we've confirmed with water, bo water bodies um and with the schools on the 22nd um and we do have a capital planning presentation correct tara do we have capital yes. planning yes now? i uh, i sent that out last week i believe right that's all right so um just like we have done with with minuteman i think everyone should look at the capital plan and um, send your questions to Daryl. Um, Daryl, uh, if you can uh, prepare the capital planning committee before their presentation with our questions, that'd be great. 
All right. Um, with the time we have left, um, I'm wondering if we could do um, this, the, the smaller committees and commissions. Tara, as I understand it, we have not heard, every, everyone is asking for the same budget amount that they got last year. Or do we have exceptions? Um, we have a couple of exceptions, but they have not. Um, a couple of exceptions of folks who are likely going to ask for increases, but don't actually know their increases yet. And I think a few of those people, a few of those groups um, were just meeting last week. So um, let's see, sorry. Here we go. Um, let's see. Na, 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 na. I believe that Zero Waste Arlington may be asking for additional. Historical Commission likely is going to ask for additional, but they needed to get back to me. And I think Open Space Committee, um, I can't remember which one of them, they might have been meeting last week, so I need to follow up with them. But a lot of them are not asking for more at this point. Okay, and so, all right, so let, let's, um, let's approve these, these committees that we know are not asking for additional funds. Before we do that, Sophie, you have your hand up. Yeah, so for the Commission on Disability, um, we had a hard time connecting, but they were asking what the deadline would be to submit a budget. So my impression is that they don't have one yet. That being said, we always um, historically give them that same level 25,000. So I don't think that's going to change. I think it's just has, we want information on what it's going to be spent on. But I don't, so that's all I have for now on that. Do you have a sense of when they might have their in any ballpark or when they might have a budget? Uh, I don't. Um, I'm hoping to speak to someone tomorrow um, okay. and to help them with that. I'm not sure they they rely a lot, a lot on the town's ADA coordinator, it looks like, um, from the email exchange I've seen. So I need to see a bit more. Okay. All right. Well, um, it'd be great if you continue to work with them and see what they might have for us and when they can have it. Um, but let's go, let's start, um, let's do some of these other small budgets, get them out of the way. All right. Um, let's start with the Transportation Advisory Committee. And, and Tara, just, just give me a shout out if if they if a group I'm I'm talking about may be asking for more money. I haven't heard right. back. It's it's really hard to. Um, there's a few that it's, it's kind of hard to track down who's like responsible for it. So I'm still trying to track down okay. a few of these. So transportation advisory committee and scenic byway. I haven't gotten the right person yet. Okay, uh, and, so and these, arts and culture. We're still waiting for. And so they're Arlington. not increasing in amount, but we're still having that hearing. But they're not requesting an additional amount. Right. Okay. So let's let's skip the arts and culture. Um, what about Envision Arlington? Are they? They're not asking for more. So um, Arlington Commission. So anything that has a no here is um, not asking for more at this time. So these six. All right. All right. So let's um, go ahead and and handle these budget requests. Starting with Envision Arlington, which is asking for, I believe, $3,000. I'm looking at our budget book on page 195. So we gave them 3,000 last year and um, they are looking for 3,000 this year. Um, do I have a motion to approve their budget request of 3,000? Totally. Totally. Seconded? Second. Yeah. 
uh, Madam Chair, I wonder if we could get all of these together and then take yeah. one vote rather than separate votes on. Yeah, I, I, that just occurred to me as, as I heard the second and I said we could do this more efficiently. All right, so tourism and economic development, they're looking for the same amount, which is 4,275. Um, zero waste, we're still waiting for, right? Yes. And the Commission on Disability, we're waiting for. Um, the Historical Commission, we're waiting for, right? They're likely gonna be requesting more, but okay. they don't know how much yet. Okay, and yeah. Madam Chair, can I ask Tara to type in these numbers as we're going through, just so I know I have them right? Oh, um, sure. Maybe add a column. Um, okay, hold on. Um, sorry, let me just think about how I want to do this. So, sorry. Um, So Envision Arlington is 3,000. Tourism is 475. Um, historic Commission going to be different than the Historical Commission? Um, you were a little choppy. Okay. I'm, um, Broadway Historic Commission. It is different, and um, I am still waiting okay. for them. I'm not, I'm not ready. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I think I'm still waiting for them. All right, Human, Human Rights Commission. Human Rights Commission, 7,500. Good with that. LGBT, 4,000. Open space. Are they good with 300? Is that what they're looking for? Yeah, um, you know, yes, they're good with that. Yep, they are. All right, I think that is all we can do tonight. Do I have a motion? No move. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All right. All right. We are moving to, we are voting to approve these five budget requests for Envision Arlington Tourism, Human Rights, LGBT and open space. Does, does, does everyone understand what we're doing now? <clears throat> Any discussion? All right, let's take a vote. Jordan is not here. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Here, Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Dave McKenna? Yes. All right. Those budgets have been approved unanimously. Harry Barber, should we do Harry Barber tonight? Is that reclassified to be something more administratively easy this year? Oh, 
last year? I I don't know. Um, Al Tosti? Yeah, um, last year we voted no action on Harry Barber and folded that into this article. So if you look at last year's report, it was uh, in for 7,500. Um, so, so we could do that. And if I could make a suggestion, um, some of these commissions and committees sort of, you know, just deal around with this stuff forever. Um, it maybe suggest to Tara that we give a deadline of May 8th, otherwise we're voting the same amount. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, I would be even more draconian than that. I'd, I'd say we want to hear from them by April 1st. Okay. Um, Oh, that gives them like that, that gives them a four weeks or five weeks. I I would I would do it in March. I said March like eighth. Oh, I thought you said May. No, March. Yeah, I yeah, I, I, I agree. Let's 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 give them let's give them to the middle of March, I, I would think. Two two more weeks. It's the first on, on Wednesday. So. Charlie, you had your hand up? Actually, Al uh, said what I was gonna say. Okay. Um, all right, so there is, um, so there is an article for Harry Barber, isn't there, Al? Right, I guess I'd like to make the most that we vote no action on the Harry Barber article itself and appropriate $7,500 into the commission's and uh, committee's article. This shouldn't be a separate Warren article. It should just be part of this. Second. All right. All right, any questions, comments, discussion on what we're doing? Alan Jones. Well, just I'm wondering, since this is only a draft warrant, can we actually have this removed from the requested to be removed from the warrant? I, I'm not sure they can do that at this point. Okay. It's uh, the Council on Aging. They just sort of it goes in automatically, but um, and then they have to renumber everything. So I, I don't think they'd want to do that if they could. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Rebecca? Thank you. Could you just repeat where the $7,500 was going? I missed that. It's an old, it's a program that's been for a great deal of time. And um, in Arlington is actually fairly unique in it, but uh, senior citizens for want of a better term uh, can work for, I think up to $500 uh, and get that to be able to use off their tax bills uh, or to pay their tax bills or to pay their rent. And, and, yeah. And so they- I, interrupt. I, I do know the program. I don't see the line item where it's going. It would go with the commissions and committees article as opposed to a separate article. I'm just not seeing on there which, which commission and committee it goes under. We would add that, is that correct? Well, there's a commissions and committees article. It's 45. Article 45. Yeah. It's Article 45. So we would be adding um, in our report to town meeting, we would break break Article 45 out and list the specific uh, committees and commissions and Harry Barber, the Harry Barber program okay. under 40, Article 45. And we would put the dollar amount there. So it's not currently listed in the town manager budget that we have in the commission section. Is that correct? It actually is listed on page 199, 199. of the manager's budget <laughs> under senior citizens committee service program. Perfect. Oh, thank you. There it is. Thank you so much. That's my question. Al Jones, you have your hand up? Is that all right? All right, so we have a motion seconded. Any further questions or discussion? All right, let's take a vote. 
Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Yes. John. Yes. Daryl. Yes. Annie. Yes. L. Jones. Yes. Topher. Yes. L. Tosti. Yes. Dave. Yes. All right. That motion passes unanimously. Um, Al Toss, do you have a hand up? Oh, sorry. Uh, is there anything else we can do tonight? Uh, can we do flags on graves and those town day, Patriots Day? Yes, we can do that. The one question I have, I don't think it would prevent us from doing those. Is it's page one ninety eight in the budget. Yeah, I thought I saw in the warrant. Yes, I heard it. In the draft warrant in Article 46, there is a new expense, the 250th anniversary celebration. Um, and I'm not seeing any um, request for appropriation in the, in the town manager's budget, but I think I, I think we can go ahead and vote um, the parades and the flags and town day and then talk to the town manager when he comes in um, about this 250th anniversary. So for, for new people every year, uh, there's an appropriation to help fund the um, the major parades, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and Patriots Day. There's the Town Day celebration. And um, um, there's money set aside to put flags on graves, which I understand is a legal requirement we have to do. Um, so um, those, those um, requested appropriations are uh, on page 198 of the town manager's budget. Any discussion? Questions? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Anything? Um, again, any any questions? Any discussions on on what we're what we're um, going to vote on. So that's uh, an appropriation of $5,667 for the parades, $4,500 appropriation for flags on graves, and $5,000 appropriation for the town day celebration. All right, let's go to a vote. Um, Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Yes. John. Yes. Daryl. Yes. Annie. Yes. L. Jones. Yes. Topher. Yes. L. Tosti. Yes. Dave. Yes. All right. Those three appropriations have been approved unanimously. All right. I think that may be it for tonight, unless anyone has anything else. I think we could do 47, because there's only one appropriation in there 
and that's for indemnity of medical costs. Which is in the budget 12,035. What page do you on the in the budget now? Uh, right there on, uh, whoops, you just left it. Or somebody just left uh, on uh, 197 at the top of the page, 12,035. And we ought to do zero for legal defense. Then we have identification of medical, which is 12,035. And that's it. All right, so Article 47, what's, what's the amount? 12,035. So I make that motion. Second. All right. Any questions, Jennifer? Uh, yeah, just a naive question. What does that mean? What is What are we doing there with the indemnity? of uh, healthcare expenses. After uh, police and fire um, are the only people in this particular category um, and the article requires, so we're responsible for their medical costs. Uh, they have to go through and use all their insur all insurance or any other alternatives. And then we pick this up. And so this is not next year's cost. This is paying costs that they, they have already incurred. So this is not into a fund. This is something we know for sure we need to pay this. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Any discussion? All right, so we'll take it to a vote. All right, Article 27 in the amount of $12,035. All right, Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Dave? I will abstain. Four, 14 in the affirmative, no, no votes in the negative and one abstention. Um, our, Article 47 has been approved. And Al, did you say we have, what else Al? Did, well, I, I think we could do Article 51. Charlie, do you have any problem doing that? It's the uh, pension adjustment for former employees. Charlie, what do you think? Uh, that's fine. Yeah, I think we can. Okay, uh, for the new people, um, when you retire, uh, you have, um, you're only getting your cost of living increases on your first 15,000. Uh, people who take your job, active employees, they're getting a cost of living raise on their whole salary. So gradually, the retiree is going to fall further and further behind what the per current person is, is earning. What this does is put a floor so that um, if you, once you get to 50%, then the retirement board 
makes up the difference so you never fall below 50%. Um, I think in all my years, they've, they've never actually had to come for this transfer, but this article provides an opportunity if they need to. So I, I'd make a motion for favorable action. It's a zero appropriation. Second. Okay, it's been a motion second. Questions, discussion. No questions, no, no discussion. All right, we'll go to a vote on Article 51. Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Yes. John. Yes. Daryl. Yes. Annie. Yes. L. Jones. Yes. Topher. Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. And Dave McKenna. I'll abstain. Fourteen votes in the affirmative, no in the negative, and one abstention. Article fifty-one is approved for zero dollars. Uh, Topher. Can we do Article 53? The assessor's budget. I had asked the manager to talk to that, but do you know what the appropriation is, Topher? Isn't it in the budget? Wasn't it? Um, let's just see here. Oh, revaluation. Revaluation, it's $100,000. And I'm asking the question if there's an issue with doing it now, we can wait. Right. Um, Annie. Well, so I guess my question is, do we have any questions for the town manager on this? I mean, I don't, it's gotta be done. I believe this is the three year appropriation. Um, and do we need to do it? Is does anyone have a response to that? Charlie, do you? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, this, is, uh, this is a requirement. The uh, assessor, um, the, the director of assessments told us that uh, this has to be voted now and used in the following year. And the state requires that the money is out there in the, in the prior fiscal year. And that's why it's in this, um, this, this warrant. And it's, this is, I, I think when we presented the, uh, when, when Topher presented the, the assessor's budget, we, uh, we noted that this is not the uh, major uh, revaluation that takes place every, I believe it's nine years. This is, a, as Annie says, is a three-year step. And most of the money is spent um, with uh, outside consultants. In this case, it's uh, gonna be Patriot. Um, Web system. I have Patriot, the Patriot group. I don't remember what their official title is. Is that right, Tover? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, that's right. Yes. So shall I take that question from you, Tover, as a motion? Um, Sure, I'll move. I'll move uh, favorable action on uh, Article Fifty Three. Second. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All right. Go to vote. Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. 
Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Yes. John. Yes. Daryl. Yes. Annie. Yes. L. Jones. Yes. Topher. Yes. L. Tosti. Yes. And Dave. Yes. All right. Article 53 in the appropriation of $100,000 has been approved unanimously. Uh, we have five minutes left. Is there anything else we can cover tonight? All right. I think we got a lot done tonight. Um, again, we're meeting in person at the Community Safety Building on the second floor. Um, and we will be hearing Minuteman. Um, unless there's anything else, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 All, in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. No. We are adjourned. See you on Wednesday. Go Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.